Hello. First of all, I want to express my gratitude towards my generous supporters who have sent me donations after I asked for a little help in my last video. I wrote an email to everyone who donated over the Easter weekend and I hope that I didn't forget anyone. Everyone who donated after that will get a message in the coming days. So be sure to check your spam folder for mails from inventordonations at gmail.com. In this video I will show you some major improvements of my workshop that have, at least to a portion, been made possible by your donations. So what is this video about? Well, some of you might remember that about a year ago I cleaned up my terribly messy basement rooms in the intention to set up another workshop especially for metalworking. In order to do that I also brought my old coal forge, anvil and other equipment to this place and I even built an electronically controlled fan system for the forge. That was half a year ago and since then no news have come from the basement nor the BLDC fan system. But what was the reason that I haven't continued both the metal workshop and the BLDC projects? Well it's actually quite simple. When I cleaned up my basement I injured my left wrist. I don't know if it was due to the fact that I opened hundreds of old rusty jars manually and simply overstressed my wrist or if it came from the many cuts that happened because of the broken glass shards that I accidentally touched while cleaning up. Whatever the reason. Parts of my hand fell constantly asleep because I somehow overstressed the nerves in my left hand or arm and it took nearly six months to recover from that. In that time I could not do any heavy work, therefore I could not build up the workshop. Using the forge was also off limits because I had no means of leading the fumes produced by the forge to the chimney. I could have suffocated had I tried to use the forge without solving that problem. Since my BLDC series started with the forge, I also wanted it to end that way. Therefore I could not make any new videos about that as well. But now I have fully recovered and for the first time there is also enough money to solve the problems with the fumes from the coal forge. So I think it's about time to upgrade the basement rooms into an awesome metal workshop to connect the forge to the chimney and to get on with these great projects. But let us first revisit the basement and see what the general situation down there looks like at the moment. In this video we will focus on this room, which I labeled room number one in my horror basement video. As you can see right away a certain chaos has again started to build up down here. We see some valuable parts mixed with the rather worthless remains of some teardowns which I performed here during the last month. In the meantime I also placed some material in the old metal shelves on the left. Mainly axles, wheels, pulleys and other basic mechanical components. Inside this old lattice box I also collected different steel and aluminium parts like pipes and angle plates and sheets, most of it taken from the trash. In front of the window we find an old shaky storage shelf. After being subjected to a certain humidity over many years the thin steel sheets are rusted through rendering this shelf totally useless. Next to the anvil and a pot of blacksmith's coal the remains of a cheap washing machine are lying around. Leaned against a wall we see a steel frame that I welded together about a year ago. I wanted to use it for a welding table before I noticed that I had injured my wrist. One more project that needs to be continued. In this corner we see the coal forge with the new fan system and next to it some stove pipes which I bought about six months ago. The material wasn't sufficient to connect the flue to the chimney and I didn't have the money to buy additional pipes. They are quite expensive. On the ceiling a single broken lamp casts its dim light into the workshop. This is a serious problem, both concerning safety and the possible precision of work that can be done down here. Furthermore, it makes it impossible to produce any quality video material. So let's clean up and bring some light into this basement. But because I actually want to show you something more interesting, let us skip the work and take a look at the result of the first few hours of work right away. Three new lamps and a bunch of wires have been installed. The lamps themselves are only a temporary solution because they are not protected against humidity or physical shock. But the LEDs I use here will stay. They are the most powerful E27 Philips brand bulbs I could find, each generating over 1500 lumens but costing 13 euros a piece. The old pots and jars are now removed from the shelves, so is all the other clutter and dirt that was lying around. With those most basic problems solved I figured it's time to add the very foundation of any workshop, 
a basic workbench. I'm actually planning to build an all steel workbench, but since I'm working on a tight budget here, a wooden workbench will have to do for now. To build a workbench I bought two 15mm oriented strand boards and some spruce square wood. These are basically the cheapest materials available, but I use them as a base material for my workbenches for a couple of years now and I'm happy with it. First I cut the spruce into the correct length. Here the old black and decker jigsaw from the repair and tear down Sunday video is coming into action once more. After that I put the two boards on top of each other and screw them together with a couple of screws. The town owns the middle lights. Once the last person is bought out and leaves the... With that being done, I fastened two of the spruce beams on the bottom side of the two boards. With the remaining spruce, I built the two frames, which will later comprise the rack on which the boards will rest. Here I have temporarily placed the boards on the frames, so that you get the idea. The frames and the board can only be joined down in the basement though, because the bench would otherwise be too large to be carried through the house. To add some additional strength to the frames, I will screw some steel angle plates in the corners. Instead of buying new plates, I will use these old salvaged IKEA parts. But first, some additional holes have to be drilled. And some swarf has to be removed. After that, all corners of the frames are supported by screwing the angle plates on them. But both raw spruce and OSB are not very resilient materials. Even though the basement rooms are just as dry as a normal living room ever since I started to allow proper ventilation, the wood should still be protected against humidity and of course against physical damage. In order to do that I will now paint all parts of the workbench from all sides. For that I used this two component polyurethane based structure paint. No, I didn't buy it for this job. This paint was originally used to spray paint the enclosures of certain vintage amplifiers which I used to repair by the numbers. But there are no more amplifiers left, so I have to get rid of this stuff in another way. I used it before to paint two other workbenches and it really is very resilient. This can, by the way, cost me over 80 euros when I bought it a couple of years ago. After stirring up the paint, mixing it with hardener, and stirring again, I start to apply the paint to the boards. The spruce parts of the rack are painted as well. After the paint has dried on one side, I proceed with the remaining free spaces. After all surfaces are covered in paint, the parts are left to dry, while warm temperatures and proper ventilation are provided. After several days, I have now brought the parts of the workbench down into the basement. I put the boards on top of the lateral frames that will comprise the rack and screw the frames loosely to the boards. The bench can already take a beating, but of course it is still very wiggly. To strengthen the entire structure, additional wooden beams are supplied with more angle plates and some additional steel sheets that I could recently score for free. After applying this technique all around the workbench, the structure is very rugged and can theoretically be used to work on. I will not paint over the plates and metal sheets on the frame, because I will have to disassemble this bench again, should I move to another place, which is likely to happen at some unknown point in the future. But as of now, we only have the bare workbench. To make it more useful in a metal workshop, a vise should be added. My old vise, which you might have seen in some of my videos, is broken though, and cannot easily be repaired. There are methods to repair it, but most probably it isn't worth the hassle. It's only a cheap cast iron vise anyway. I have recently bought a replacement though. 
What you see here is a vise made in Plettenberg, Germany by the Heuer Corporation. Heuer is still in business today, as it seems, and it still does what it always did, forging vices. Nice to know that there are some things which stay the same in this world. So I guess today my greetings go out to Plettenberg which lies in an old industrial region called the Sauerland. Also, schöne Grüße ins Sauerland. The vice might be 50 years old and it shows some wear, but since it's forged from steel rather than made from cast iron, I guess it can make another 50. I bought this for under 50 bucks from some guy who actually painted it recently. The paint itself has a nice color, but I will remove it again. I want to use this both for blacksmithing and welding and I guess the paint won't play well with neither the heat nor with the electrical current. In order to remove the paint from the less accessible parts I also have to disassemble it. After removing the paint as good as I can, I put the vise together again. And it works so well, I can turn it effortlessly with just one finger. I could now bolt the vise on the bench, but it just so happened that this piece of steel came into my possession while I was already building the bench. The steel plate is about 8 mm thick and it has the right length to be mounted on top of the bench. And I spontaneously decided to do just that. It will allow me to do at least minor welding jobs on the edge of the bench without destroying its surface. The plate is both dirty and rusty though, hence it must be clean. I'm planning to later build a real welding table, but for that I have to figure out how to purchase and buy a large steel plate first. For now, this will be better than no steel surface at all. After cleaning the surface, I cut off a couple of centimeters, which would otherwise have protruded from the edge of the bench. Now I place the plate on top of the workbench. I decided to mount the vise directly over the frame, giving maximum stability. I mark the spots and drill holes into the plate. Now I also drill holes through the bench. On the right hand side the plate will be held in place by the vise, but on the left we need additional means of fastening it. I cannot simply use bolts because their heads would protrude from the surface and that would be unpractical for working on the steel plate. Therefore two additional holes are drilled into the workbench and two threaded rods are welded on the bottom side of the plate. The plate is then lowered onto the bench and the vise is bolted down. And so are the two threaded rods. With that being done, the vise and the steel plate are ready for action. But finally I want to mount, but finally I want to mount this German-made Flott brand bench grinder to the workbench. Flott, by the way, is another traditional company that is in business for over 160 years. I guess everyone who has anything to do with metalworking in Germany knows Flott, but I have no idea if they are known overseas. So, with the room and the shelves cleaned, the lighting improved, the vise and the grinder mounted on the new workbench, I guess I have done some important steps in order to improve the situation in my workshop. But there is a lot of work ahead of me. What you see is a hundred euros worth of stove pipes that hopefully will help to bring the forge into operation. But the flue will have to be suspended somehow and a lot of cutting, grinding and welding will have to be done. Furthermore, only one electric outlet is present in this room, a situation to be improved upon. On top of that, I have also made a great score at an old local machine shop. But all the power tools you see here will have to be overhauled and cleaned and so on and so forth. A lot of work lies ahead of me, so this might take some time. But no matter what, I hope you found this video interesting and inspiring. And uh, I hope that you're interested in the future of this project. So just tell me if you are. But no matter what, I hope to see you soon. Sauerland, mein Herz schlägt für das Sauerland.
Begrab mich mal am Ländestrand, wo die Misthaufen träumen, da gibt's keine Palmen. Sauerland, mein Herz schlägt für das Sauerland. Vergrab mein Herz im Ländesand, wo die Mädchen noch wilder als die Kühe sind. Wuhu!